As an Angular developer in 2025, it can get a bit confusing. Because on one point, you want to use signals in your components like this. Because, well, performance reasons, change detection, and all of that good stuff. But you also want to use RxJS in your services like this. So you have HTTP client which you use for your API calls, for asynchronous calls. You want to use these service data and you want to get it in your component as signals. And that brings in a bit of complexity. And so that brings me to the question that I got from one of my viewers of my previous videos. Now, I don't know his real name, but H2, I'm going to call him. He said that, thank you for this tutorial. Am I correct that if you have an input signal, say user ID, you cannot put this signal in a true signal like that. So what he's saying is that he wants to get a data in response to the input signal changing. And the data is a function which returns an observable, but it also needs to send the parameter, the input signal itself. Can you get it just by using two signal here like this? What is your recommendation in this very common use case? So yeah, things have changed quite a lot. And I thought back to all of the different ways that we used to do. Initially, we just used to do it the old RxJS way. But now there are much better alternatives in keeping with the signals APIs in Angular, the resource API. So in this video, I'm going to show you about three or four different ways of doing exactly the same thing. The most common use case, and you can pick and choose whatever you want based on your particular project and your particular structure. And as always, I'm going to do it uh, on a real Angular application, which I built previously just to showcase a search sort of bar functionality. And you can see that I have a books application in which we can search for different books. This is integrated with the Google Books API. So you can, for example, put an Angular search here and you can get top five Angular sort of quick results. And you can also get all of the results here like this, which takes you to the results page and you can have all of the results here like this. But you can also click on any of the results here. And when you click on these results, you go to the book detail page. Now this detail page is going to get a book ID which you can actually use to get the book detail from the Google Books API. So this book detail page is what we want to build because as you can see, we don't have the data as yet here. And we're going to look at three or four different ways of doing this. Now also, it becomes interesting when you actually can also go directly from these results. So you, if you click on this, you can see that this input changes, but the whole component does not change. So this needs to be really reactive when you actually click on this and the input changes, the data should change automatically. Okay, so and as always, the code is available for this app. The search bar and the search results functionality integrated with Google Books is available on the link in the description. If you want to get that, you can get that right now. Okay, so let's get started with this. So the first thing you want to know is that we have the book ID in your, in your root params here like this. So how do we get it in the component? Well, if you look at the code here, and I go in my app.config here, you have with component input binding, which is an option introduced in one of the recent versions to the router. And what it does is that it automatically converts the parameter for the root into input signal component. So if you go in your book detail component, where we show the book detail, you can see that we have a book ID as an input dot required here. So we are going to get, whenever that root param changes, we are going to get a change in the book ID signal here like this. And then you can see that we have a detail here, which corresponds to the book type. So this is the detail of the book that we want to get here. So how do we get from book ID to detail? That is the question. And we want to get the detail, make an asynchronous call, and we want to get the detail back here. Well, we can use a service function, which you already have here. So I've already set it up in book detail service here like this. You can see that we have HTTP client, which is the most common way that developers use even today to send REST API calls. And so we have everything set up here like this. We make a call to the Google Books API with the book ID here like this. And then we use convert to books to convert the format to parse the data. And this then goes back in the form of an observable book here like this. So we just need to use this as an observable here in your component. Okay, so what's the simplest way that we can do that? Well, let's first try out the simplest way that the comment h2 here, I'm going to call him h2 here, thought that should work here like this. Okay, so we're just going to use two signal and let's see whether this works or not. So let's say that we want to convert your book ID to that book detail that we want. And here then we can do this dot. We need to import, we need to inject our book detail service here like this. So let's say detail service. Let's inject here book detail service here like this. Okay. And then within this, then we can do this dot book detail service dot get book detail. And in this, then we can, we should be able to give this. Okay. 
as the com uh, as the edge to thought. Let's save this and let's see whether we can make this work. So let's go to the Angular search bar here, and I'm also gonna open up the developer console just to see how this looks like. So it seems like we have already got an error here, and it's a runtime error. Input book ID is required, but no value is available yet. Okay. So what's happening is that it's using the book ID here initially when even the book ID has not been initialized as yet. So it hasn't even got the root param at that stage and it is using the two signals there as well. So it's giving an error there. Maybe we want to just remove the input required here because that might be the source of the error. But then if you remove this and this is going to give an issue that okay, this is an, this could be an undefined as well. So let's just handle that by using this term nullish coalescing operator here like this. And let's save this and let's see how this looks. And it doesn't give an error here, so that's good. But if we then click on something like this here, it sends the API call, that's fine. But it sends the wrong, you can say, payload here. You can see, you can see that it doesn't send anything here in the book ID here. And that's why it gives an, it gives an error back instead of the detail that we have. So that means that it's getting the undefined book ID value and we don't have any way to actually tell it to wait for it okay and the reason is that because this two signal this whole observable is resolved when the component initializes even before you know it has got the all of its root params in the inputs here so this is the no go okay so that the answer to that question is no we can't really use that way so then what would be a good way to do that so the first obvious way would be then if you would want to and to actually make it reactive is to actually convert this maybe to an observable here okay so let's do that and let's just convert this back to a signal and let's say it would be a book or it would be undefined initially and let's say that we give undefined initially here like this okay so we could do in ng on in it we could set up an observable chain here like this the rxjs way okay so this would be the first way to do this the old way the initial way that we used to do that now because we want to listen to the changes on book id we can do to observable and we can do book id here like this this dot book id it's going to convert this to an observable and then we can do pipe and then we can do switch map and in this switch map we can give the book id here like this and we can then use good old rxjs to get the book detail here like this we have the book id here like this and it says here that it could be undefined here as well like this so yeah maybe we can also give this required here again just like it was before and then we don't get this error anymore okay let's then subscribe here and in the subscription we get the book detail and we can just this dot detail dot set the detail here like this okay and let's save this and let's see whether this works and let's refresh this okay so it says the two observable can only be used within an injection context so yeah it should be basically in a constructor here like this and voila we have our detail here like this and is it reactive well if you can see here, if we can search for here like this, angular here like this, and we do expert angular, yes, the component is not changing, but because the ID is changing, the input signal is changing here, we are refreshing the signal using the RSGS way. So this works and it works great. But as you can see, a lot of code for such a simple functionality. And also the biggest thing we need to so explicitly subscribe here to the observable which you want to avoid because it's just extra code and becomes difficult to manage. Now, obviously, if you are subscribing here like this, we would also want to unsubscribe here like this, add some take until destroyed or any of that functionality. And it just adds a lot of complexity to a simple functionality here like this. So no, we don't want to use the RxJS way. We, you want to use any new signal way to do that. Okay. So then the next best thing would be to actually use the two signal and the two observable, but in a slightly more complex way. Okay. So now initially you remember that we used two signal here like this. Okay. We did two signal here and we put in this dot book detail service dot get book detail, get book detail. But what if instead of the, this get book detail directly, what we can do is we can just do two observable and we can give the book ID here. So we start with the book ID, we convert into an observable, then we pipe. And we use the same of switch map and we then use book ID, this dot book detail service dot get book detail. And we use the book ID here. And this should now get us the correct book D as an observable, which we can use to signal to convert into a signal here like this. Okay. And this should be reactive because we are converting the book ID signal. We're not using the signals value directly like we did initially. 
but we are converting it to an observable which means any change to this is going to get propagated in the observable chain and then we can convert it back to true signal. So let's see whether this works. Let's save this and you can see that it works. Great. So if we, for example, change it and we want to do react now, let's do react and react native and you can see that it's truly reactive because the data is changing based on this book. Great. So this is the second way that you can do and this is just one line of code but it's a very long line and it, it doesn't look that good, it's clunky, we are converting things here and there. So let's look at the next best thing and this brings us to the resource API. So the resource API was introduced for exactly this use case but the resource also has two different flavors to it. So one is the resource, the simple resource and that requires us to use promises for asynchronous tasks but in this case we have an observable so what we can do is we can use an Rx resource, okay? So next we're going to do an Rx resource in this case, okay? So now since this is a resource and a resource is not exactly a value, resource is basically, it contains more than a value, okay? So resource is an asynchronous data fetching request which contains the loading state as well, which contains the error state as well. So we can call it a detailed resource instead of a detail itself because it's not exactly the value. So we can go Rx resource here. And now in this Rx resource, we can give two things. It has two parts to it. So the first part is the param, which are basically the trigger signals or the dependent signals which cause the resource to refresh automatically. So in this case, we are going to do book ID here. Simple enough. And then we can give the stream option here because an observable can actually just give you a stream of values. It can give a values over a period of time. So this is the perfect use case if you want to combine signals and rxjs observables in your components so in the stream here then you can take a function here like this and this function you can return whatever you want so you can return this dot book detail service dot get book detail and what do we give here so we give parameters here like this and it's not only the params here so we have a params within the params which basically contain the value for this signal here like this so we can just give the params this is going to be the book id value that we have okay great since we have a detailed resource here like this we need to update it here in your template here as well so we're going to do detail resource and we're going to do detail resource dot value here like this and that is going to be the detail and here that we can check detail resource we also have an is loading value here which we can use for our loader which is really really nice okay so let's save this and now you can see that we have our loading here and we get the same functionality but in a much nicer Put. So if you kick on physics for dummies here, essential angular here, angular development with TypeScript here, you can see that we get an API call for each of this when this book ID is changing here. Okay. So this is the really the sweet spot. The Rx resource is the sweet spot. The code is simple. We know what is depending upon what. And we can also even add checks here to give back an initial value. For example, if the book ID is not there, we can add checks here for that. But in this case, we don't need it. So this is the Rx resource. But if this also looks a bit verbose to you in your component and you want to use something directly, you can also use the HTTP resource. Now, the HTTP resource is a special type of resource built on top of all the resource API, but that is meant to make HTTP calls. So it directly takes in the URL and it has a slightly more easier syntax for giving the parameters or the dependent signals. So how do you use that? Well, you can just remove this here and you can do HTTP resource here like this. And the great thing about the HTTP resource is that it also uses the HTTP client under the hood. And with the HTTP client, why do we use that? We use that because it allows us to use interceptors. So the HTTP resource, when you use it, it will be like you are using HTTP client. So you can actually just get rid of this HTTP client in your service if you would like to. So let's just copy this here and we're just going to copy this whole URL here like this and let's just copy this in this. So this is going to be a function and we're going to do this. But you can see that we have the book ID here. So how are you going to specify the book ID? Well, you can do it really simply here and you can do book ID and you can give the value here like now because we have given a signal here and the value here, the HTTP resource, this function is going to be clever enough to refresh this whenever this book ID signal changes. So this is all going to be automatic. When we try to compile this, we're going to get an error here that detail.description is not found and detail.image is not there. So that is because the detailed resource that we get, the type is unknown. 
because we're not really converting it into a type that we expect on our front end. Now, if you look through the book details service that we were using before and it was working fine, we had a convert to books function that we were using for mapping or for parsing the data that we got from the Google Books API into our own data format and to our own types. So this is a really helpful functionality that has been built into the HTTP resource API as well and is really welcome because most of the time we do have to do it even if we have a very good relationship with the backend team, we sometimes do have to parse it into our specific types or we have to convert it or we have to use the mother's validation schema libraries like Zord, which I can discuss in a separate video. So this is a really helpful addition and the way you do that is you add an, an options object in the HTTP resource as a second parameter and in that you give a parse function here. Now this parse function, it will take in the data that you get from the HTTP response, the API response. And you can now use anything that you want. I'm going to use the same convert to books function. And this convert to books function, we want to send it as an array. And we want to get the first item of the array here. And you can see that just like that, all of the errors are gone. And the reason is because in the detailed resource now, it's automatically finds out that, okay, it will give a book type in return. And all of the templates have been built according to that specific thing. All of the other resource related things, the value that is loading remains the same because the HTTP resource is just using the same interface as a normal resource API would. Okay, so let's save this and let's see. And you can see that our app works the way that it should be. So we are getting the different book details when we change the book ID here, when our input changes. Great, so this is sort of the cleanest way you can actually do that. Obviously, if you don't want to use this, you might want to shift this into a service. So that requires a bit of an extra work, which I can discuss in a separate video if you'd like to. Then do leave me a comment if you'd like me to discuss that scenario as well. But if you just want a quick consuming in REST API in your component, you can use the HTTP resource API directly here as well. Okay, so you would say that this would be the best way to do that and that's great. But currently, the issue is that the HTTP resource, the resource, the Rx resource, they are all experimental APIs even now in Angular version 20. So if you don't want to use it or if you can't use it because of your organizational restraints or some other issues that you can't use experimental APIs in your production applications, then you can also use a fallback sort of method. And for that, you'll need to use the ng extension. ng extension is a very helpful library built by Angular Google developer experts and other folks interested in creating utilities for Angular. And they have created a derived async, which actually does the same thing, but with all of the stable APIs used underneath so that you don't have to worry about, you know, using unstable APIs or experimental APIs. Currently, it does require you to install ng extensions, which you can do by going here and going in the install section here. It's really simple here. If you're using ng extension, you just need to do derived async here like this okay and you can import it from ng extension here import this from the extension slash derived async you can update import here and then in derived async you can actually give the same thing as you would give in an http resource so you can give an observable as well if you'd like to so we can directly use the search result service here so we can do book detail service dot get book detail and we can directly send in the value here. And in this case, the derived async function is going to automatically track book.id and it's going to be automatically reactive. So if you try this out now and it's not a resource anymore, so we can just remove the resource here like this and we can go back to using detail here, just a signal here like this. And here we can just check that, okay, if it's not present here like this. Okay, so let's save this and not try this out again. And you can see that the functionality remains the same as it did before. Okay, the potential Angular, Angular development with TypeScript, and you can see that our data is getting fetched and our APIs are being called. Okay, so this was the sort of the fallback way if you are not ready to use the resource API. And this brings us to the end of the video and I hope you have learned about three to four different ways and basically how to work with signals and RxJS side by side in your Angular applications in 2020 to get the benefits of both in your applications. Again, if you want the code for this, this app is going to be on the link in the description. And thanks for watching and I'll see you next time with another interesting video. Do let me know in the comment 
if you have any other signal related problems or use cases that you want to address and I'll be happy to create videos related to those.